So as I told you guys a minute ago, I was gonna do a little video. I got started, remember I told you to break the figure up into kind of a series of geometric shapes, just to kind of get the, it helps us kind of, and scroll back and forth to her, thank you, so that we can kind of get going with, um, like remember we had the uh, trapezoid shape here that's kind of a cylinder upside down. Then we have one that's right side up that overlaps, and it's also kind of a cylinder too, but it's larger at the bottom than it is at the top. And then we put in the arms, which would be a kind of a cylinder. You can look at, see what, be like that. And I had it a minute ago and I lost it. And then the other hand is very much foreshortened because it's coming right at us. So we have a very short something like that. Um, I'm using, just like I said, I'm using V-Stray, white, and black interchangeably. I haven't really, you can start to, I use the side of these after I've drawn, I mean, after I've drawn it in. You can guys can take a look. Yeah, I'm kind of lightening this up. Using the side eventually after I've drawn everything in. I can kind of layer with these based on where the light's coming from, the lights. Hey, uh, let me cut these out. Uh, let me turn one of these on. Okay. I guess we'll have to do that. Just so everybody can see. So that we can start putting in the shadows and highlights. Having the track lighting right above her really makes cast shadows, and we, we need that. Cast shadows are your friend. <laughs> I realized that I got the leg of the chair. Look at where it lines up. It's right here. You want to use the black obviously for the darks and the white obviously for the highlights and then in between you can use the beast ray and then layer with these two. I'm still going to use the black to put in shadows. It's all about layering with and then you know working on it. it. Obviously, you'll need the black to define things more as we go back to her, look at her, and then for a second and come back. Thank you. This is in shadow on the left side. More so, well, you got some tiny shadows here. Um, Foreshortening of the ch chair. Something like that. Going right through the leg. Let's see, this comes down. Uh, uh, turn that that way. Something like that. These two will be parallel. And you've got this kind of mimicking this shape. 
And this comes over. I use the side sometimes of the, to make a straight line rather than trying to use the tip of my, um, tip of the piece of contact. Then we gotta put a wedge shape for the foot. So, kinda does this number. Yep, that's kinda not what I wanted, but kind of. Should come down a little lower. Then we have a box that she's got her foot propped up on. This comes through, if we have the tip there, we have the tip there. This comes back like that. Something doesn't look quite right. I need to lower this down or something. The angle's off. I'll work on that in a minute. This comes out a little bit more. I got it in too much. And then this. So now I'll turn, come over here so you can look straight back for me, please, sir. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Show them what we got going on, please. This is the darkest side. This is the next darkest. And obviously that's the lightest side. So we can kind of lighten up. Don't worry about erasing too much. Just, you know, we, this is a lot of layering involved here. But we also want to use the black for the cast shadows. Looking good. Good in there. There. darker underneath the leg because that's in a deeper shadow, right? So we want to do that kind of thing and underneath this. Uh, we're getting there. Cast shadow that goes across on the floor. Show them the cast shadow on the floor. Thank you. So you can see that I'm noticing that. Any kind of a shadow that you can play up, any kind of a cast shadow that you can play up is, is to your advantage. It's what's gonna create more dimension. You know, if you're trying to get more of a, we do have a highlight, you know, the, the tops of the legs are highlighted. Even on this side, it's highlighted. You can use, uh, like I said, with the, also, you may want to get some uh, toilet paper or tissue paper to, to blend a little bit. You don't have to blend this quite as much as uh, the, or for the Indian ink, we used it to blot out, you know, if we got too dark. For this, we use it more to blend with. It's always good to have a little bit of tissue or toilet paper to do that with for this. And then I'm putting in, look at the cast shadow underneath the arm there. I, didn't, I missed that totally. It's kind of like relaxed in the chair there, so I gotta get that. Start to highlight some of this stuff. You can layer over this and then go back in.
Uh, I need to go back to the red, don't I? I'm going to use the B stray for the skin tone, more or less. But then I'll use white and black to make it lighter and darker. So here's the shadow side. And then overlap this with the highlighted side. Instead of going with the arm, go against the arm sometimes so that it's not all so one direction. And we can start, uh, let's see, forehead needs to be lighter, doesn't it? Kind of layer with both the brown and the white. Doing a great job, Carly. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Let's see, eyes. You get to the eyes, you know, we want to make the eyes feel darker because they're in a socket. They're not flush with the forehead. They're not level with the forehead. <laughs> they go into your skull. That's one of the I, reason why I'm saying that is because a lot of beginning drawing people draw the eyes in the same, they don't think about the shadows around the eyes that make the eyes feel like they're in a socket which they need to do. The, the forehead's highlighted, or the, the hair's highlighted at the top. Show them where the top of, look at her hair at the top. It's highlighted up here, but then we go back in with the darks and go around that. We're getting there. Drawing is so much fun. Let's see. Leg. I just go back and when, once I get the shapes somewhat where I want them to be, I just start going back from highlight to shadow, highlight to shadow. I use this as kind of the mid, the mid tone, highlight and shadow. You just go between the three. And now you can see that this is starting to look a little more, hopefully, dimensional. I mean, you just have to keep working, building it up. The backside of the leg and the arms are gonna be in shadow. You really have to make that. So we keep going deeper with the shadows. See, look at her. Look at the shadows on her. I lost them because this stuff. Um, you move over it. Now we're gonna have to use what's called spray fixative, or you can use aer aerosol hairspray when you're done with the drawing, not while you're working on it. Now with you can use what's called reworkable fixative, which means you can add on top of it. Spray fixative is what keeps this from moving around once you're done. I didn't use it on the last charcoal drawing and my drawing smeared everywhere. The one I did, of, I think of you or maybe it was Haven. I can't remember. There's a dark in there that I want to pop out. And then to me, drawing is like putting a puzzle together because I've been doing it so long. You know, it's like, it's like you get a really difficult crossword puzzle and you're having to put the pieces or trying to trying to put the pieces together basically it's the way it feels to me this is in shadow over here thanks for hanging in there with me Tyler and Carly Really want to push some of these darker. I don't know what happened there? Maybe even a highlight on the 
the metal. Yeah, I'm supposed to turn that. Uh, let's see. If this is here, this is level with that, right? This comes back at the same angle. Uh, then this would be parallel with this. So I need to move that a little more upright. You got to put that back part in for the chair. It's all about layering with Conte. You guys look how I'm layering. You stop with one and go back with the other one. Just looking at these darks and I'm popping these darks back out that I didn't really get to before. I think. I keep losing. I need to put the hair back in. It got lost. And hands are hard. I'll be the first one to admit that. But you have to break the hand up into a series of planes. Like if you've got the if you've got the you want to do something like this and then put the fingers in, not try to start with the fingers. There's a, like a thumb. If her hand's curled like that, well, this one is. And you want to break the hand into kind of a mitten and then break it up into planes. And then each plane is treated a little bit differently. There goes in shadow. Whoa. And then you can break out. Start with a mitten and then break up the fingers. Don't try to. Not easy, easier said than done, right? And you can start to see now that the, the figure is starting to emerge. But you have to keep reanalyzing re what the light's doing. Look, I'm not stopping. I'm looking at the overhead light. Where's the lightest light? Squint your eyes like this. What's the lightest light? What's the darkest dark? And then you just start making notations that you know, that, uh, based on what you're seeing. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. I was drawing. See all these shadows and the wrinkles? This is a lot of fun. Didn't mean for you to pose quite this long, Carly, but I was on a roll. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Go with the leg and against the leg. You guys, look. Don't go with the distance of the leg all the time. Break it up by countering that with another mark this way. You can start off like that, but then go another direction. Don't go with the leg constantly. It kills the, it makes the leg feel longer than it's supposed to be, usually. See, I went that way, but then I broke it up going that way. Oh boy, okay. We're starting to get somewhere, I think. Highlights on the shirt. I mean, I keep going back. It's just an instantaneous thing. You, you start doing this stuff just based on, it's like, a, it's like an automatic thing. You know exactly, you're constantly searching out highlights and shadows. 
And like I said, it's kind of like putting a puzzle together once you... That's why I like this way more than playing video games at home. This is so much more exciting to me than zoning out and playing a video game. It's because you're actually... Sorry guys, I didn't mean to go there, but... I mean, we're trying to draw better here, aren't we? That's our, that's our objective. You only need little pieces of Conte. You don't need huge pieces. I mean, you can see that I'm going to town on the light and shadow, light and shadow, light and shadow. If I get this one good enough, I'll post it on Instagram or something. But... You'll notice if in the career of my, my career, the one thing that I have noticed, and I've been painting for 25 years now, 26, 27 years, painting and drawing, is you become more and more self, if you become serious at it, you become more and more self-critical. You wanna constantly raise the standard. If I'm not satisfied with something I'm doing, I don't, I, you know, I'll keep working on it or I'll ditch it. Because, you know, I have high expectations. I used to not be that way. I used to not be as, have as high of an expectation of my work as I do now. But over time, it seems like you do more. It's weird. This box is so much lighter on the top. Show them the box. See the... The shades on each side, like this is the lightest, this is the darkest, and then you've got the two shades between. So what do we do? We have to go back in and, and re... This needs to go a lot darker here because it's in shadow. The darkest shadow. And then we have little cast shadows off the sides of that. This line is really dark here. Let's see, I miss, messed up that angle. I can tell the angle of the chair should be going a little more upright like that, this back angle. Should be more like that. Yeah, blend with your fingers a little bit if you want. I used to blend a lot more, but I kind of like the freeness of just not blend, over blending because it shows the mark. But you start looking at her shirt, look at all the varieties of different blacks and whites and grays, all the different grays, that's what I meant to say, all the different grays. So I really want to try to play that up as much as we can. Man, this is fun. She's like, uh, are you done now? So if you'll come this way, come around and then show them from this point of view. Thank you, sir. So they see, instead of a side view, they see the... I just keep working the backs of these legs going darker and darker. Back of the... I think I went a little too dark back here. Lost the arm, so lighten that up a little bit with the with the brown, the bistre color. And I, you know, of course, I'm going to recheck my proportions as I'm going. I mean, it's not like you. that up. That shadow should be going back further. You catch yourself doing stuff when you're, nobody's perfect when they're drawing. Even Michelangelo, he would redraw, redraw, redraw. Because you catch things as you're going. It's just the part of it. 
you're like, oh, wait a minute, I missed this, or I should have done this to this. What time is it? 11.50. Oh, okay, we'll stop now. So thank you.